Hello and welcome back to Alex's Computer Lab. I'm going to do a very simple video today. I'm just going to make a video of assembling this drive which will be installed in a Sun Microsystems Ultra 10 workstation. So I don't need really high performance, uh, but I wanted to go with a completely modern solution. And uh, these adapters are available fairly cheaply from a normal a number of places. So first here we have the drive itself. So it is, as you can probably see, a 64 gig MSATA SSD. So fairly standard, fairly inexpensive. I've used this in mem brand uh, a bunch of times. Obviously not sponsored by them or any such thing, but uh, I've had good success with them in a variety of older devices, so it seems to work pretty well. Uh, I guess while we're doing that, we'll get the things out. No fancy unboxing tools here. I just unwrap with my fingernails what's left of them. So here's the SSD. It comes in a little box like that, and then there it is. So next, we have this uh, adapter here. So this adapter converts a, an MSATA SSD to 44-pin IDE. So here's the adapter. These are cheap. There's a variety of these available. Again, I bought mine from Amazon, but they're available from a lot of sources. Um, and if you open it up using this screwdriver I happen to have right here, um, which it's actually not screwed together yet, so I don't need it. Here's the board. So you can see right here is where the MSATA SSD plugs in. And then there's two little screws that are already inserted into the board. So I take those out to screw the SSD down. And then we have a little, SS, uh, little uh, SATA to IDE adapter chip and the header. And then last, and this is something I hadn't seen until recently, although I'm sure they were available. This is a really nicely set up um, three and a half inch, to two and a half inch adapter for uh, for. 44 pin IDE to 40 pin IDE. And of course the Ultra 5 or Ultra 10, if you're not familiar, they do use uh, 40 pin IDE with a relatively crappy IDE controller, but it does work. And again, fancy unboxing techniques here on this channel. And if I did a better job opening the bag, it would be easier for me to get it out, but you know, can't have everything. Okay, rid of all of our trash. So here's the board. It comes with some little standoffs um, and the screws necessary. So let's go through and let's put this together. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the screws out of this little adapter board. First screw. Oh, second one's already loose. These actually are number two Phillips, and of course I have handy a number one Phillips screwdriver, so I'll have to be careful not to strip it. So whenever you're touching a device like this, especially in the winter as it happens to be here, you want to be careful. It is somewhat static sensitive, so I'm going to reach behind myself and touch plastic because there's nothing. There's no, there we go. Let's find some metal. So what I quite often will do is I'll touch the center screw on an outlet cover if you're in the United States like I am. Just find something grounded and discharge yourself. It's not something I normally think about a lot, but it is pretty dry right now. I'm going to take the SSD, and again this is a 64 gig SSD, and install it in this little enclosure here. And then I'm going to take these two little screws and secure it. And again, the trick to not stripping, especially when you're using the wrong Phillips screwdriver is to apply lots of force. So that's what I am doing. So there we go. So very straightforward. It's really not at all complicated. And you notice I did not read the instructions, which of course I might have done that. So now we're going to take this guy and we're going to put it in its little case. That's very easy as well. You just take the case and you stick it on like that. And then, for those of you who have worked on them, it looks just like and is the size of an old 44 pin, two and a half inch IDE hard drive out of an old PC laptop. Oh, 
let's see. I'm worried about putting the little bag of screws. Here they are. So these are some truly terrifyingly tiny screws. And this is why I have the number one screwdriver handy. So normally I would use some kind of a little bowl or something to put them in, but I didn't think to get one out, so we'll have to deal with this. So I put them on the green PCB so I can see them, and so hopefully they don't disappear. Yeah, there we go. So that is a number one screwdriver, that's why I have this one. It is handy. This, this is a fairly nice screwdriver. I got this as a actually a birthday present from my parents. It is made by a Chinese company called Tac Life. Um, again, not sponsored by them, no recommendations, no nothing, but I do like the set. Uh, it's fairly inexpensive if you look it up online, and uh, the quality of it's real good. So, uh, I happened to run into the kit at the Vintage Computer Federation Museum in uh, Wall, New Jersey. Uh, link in the description for that, but it's vcfed.org. Uh, but anyway, uh, we have it in our museum as the work area tool set, and I really liked it. It was donated by one of the members. I played with it, liked it, and then uh, happened to mention it apparently at some point to my parents, and they bought it for me, which is it's a very nice gift. I have about five sets of screwdrivers, most of which were gifts from various folks because I am a geek and that's the sort of thing I enjoy. Um, my wife gave me one that I still use to this day. It's probably my highest quality small screwdriver set. Uh, that's from iFixit and I really do like that kit. It's their, their basic, I think, 64-bit kit and I, I really like it. Here's another thing that's, that's nice about this particular two and a half inch adapter is that they give you an extra screw. So when the screws are this tiny, having an extra screw is really handy. So I'll put that off to the side. So now, our next thing is we're gonna install this in the back plate here. So I think that should be fairly straightforward, depending on if the heights match up. And I did not try this before the recording this video, so we shall see. This is a little tight, so I don't know if this is going to work or not. If it doesn't, what I can do is, of course, I can desolder the header that we're plugging into here on this board and raise it up a little bit. Because the problem here, and I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this on video, is the fact that uh, this header is soldered flush to the board, um, which works fine if the pins are all the way down in the bottom. But on this adapter, as you can see here on the tape, uh, these pins may stick up a little bit. And again, I don't know if that's coming through well. I can, there's a little bit of reflection from the light, so hopefully you can see that. But you can see this is where their through hole soldered here. And again, it's, it's not service mount, it's a through hole connector for strength. And uh, that makes it so it is not completely flush. So the combination of the two makes this a little bit more challenging. I'll try and work it in there a little bit, but if not, I will break out the desoldering iron and I don't know how much, no, I probably have enough pins here to be able to do it. But let's see, if I can get it in there and make it work, that'll be great. Okay. Looks like it might work. I can hear a little bit of scraping, but I'm being a little bit careful here. Yeah. <laughs> I love how that fits. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Because that's putting a fair amount of pressure on that connector. It's certainly making electrical contact, so that's at least something. So let's see. In this kit for the two and a half to three and a half inch adapter, they supplied a couple things. They supplied some, I guess, what can I use so you can see this? I guess I'll take this piece of trash here and I'll put the screws on that. But uh, they supplied a couple poly standoffs uh, and some screws and nuts. So let's see what we've got here and what the best thing is to use. So these are long standoffs. And then we have these two short ones. I do not know what each one of those is intended to be. 
again, I probably should have read the docs. It's interesting that we have these two standoffs here, which clearly I think these are meant to go in those. I'm guessing those are meant for these sides here for side mounting. That's my guess, but why are there not four then? I don't know the answer to that. And then of course the four holes on the bottom match up, but these I don't think are going to be nearly long enough to be able to go into that, but we'll see and we'll try it. Well, I might have underestimated. Again, this isn't the right screwdriver, so you have to be careful not to strip it. But uh, I think it's working. Again, when I say strip, of course, I'm talking about the screw head. It is, again, just screwing the plastic here, but it works. So there you go. There's our, there's our adapter completed. And of course, if I'm going to put this in the case, either I need to secure it left and right, which again, I'm assuming that's what these are for, um, or I need to, again, I'm just not quite sure how these are supposed to work. I would guess maybe like that, secure from the bottom. But again, why are there two and not four? Who knows? That's the one thing with these kits is that, of course, you do sort of take your chances on uh, exactly how well thought out the the kit is because, you know, it's there's not a lot of effort put in. So I guess what I'll do for the moment is we'll assume, we'll assume we're going to screw it on the bottom. I'll take these little screws like this. And when I put it in, I will screw through the drive tray up through here put one here and then one there and that'll have to do it's not very heavy so anyway uh, that's it this is the assembled uh, drive adapter and uh, I think that looks pretty good of course the other question is on this adapter I guess uh, yeah so the master slave is of course these two little pins here and I didn't set that I don't remember what the default of the box is, but I don't remember having to put a jumper on those either, so we shall see. Hopefully it'll work. But hopefully you found this at least a little bit interesting. Um, this should be useful for a lot of retro machines that need IDE, but you want to put an SSD in here. The advantage, and I didn't really mention this before, of using an MSAT SSD rather than a CF card or an SD card or any other sort of flash like that is there's much superior wear leveling, even on a, a little SSD like this. Uh, it's also obviously going to be quite a bit faster. Not that that's really going to matter a ton, but for this uh, for this particular application. But anyway, it is a lot better wear leveling. So if you put a swap partition, like again we will do in this Ultra 10 on this SSD, it will wear out much more slowly. So anyway, um, thanks for watching, and uh, please let me know what you think of this video, and I hope to see you soon.